Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Ruth Barnes, the Thomas Jaffe Curator of Indo-Pacific Art at the Yale University Art Gallery. Dr. Barnes is an art historian in the field of South and Southeast Asian textiles with a particular interest in the social history of material culture and the anthropological interpretation and has studied textiles from South and Southeast Asia as well as from the Islamic world from this perspective. Today we talk with Dr. Barnes about the new Indo-Pacific Gallery that just opened this past December. Welcome, Dr. Barnes. Thank you. Welcome. It's so nice to have you here, and I have to say congratulations to you because the um, gallery that just opened opened to such spectacular rave reviews. I've actually been there myself, and I think it is fantastic. So kudos to Thank you. Thank you for very that. much. <laughs> um, let's start with you giving us an overview of the gallery. Right. Um, the collection is really um, very new. Mm -hmm. It's totally new to the gallery and it is probably new uh, material for most of our visitors. And for that reason, I, uh, I really tried very much to give an overview and a, um, and a, a general introduction to the, to the material from maritime Southeast Asia, which is the main focus okay. of our collections. Eventually, we hope that we will also include material from the oceanic world, but that is not uh, on display at the moment. Okay. Um, so I'm introducing... So just to, I'm sorry, just to interrupt for one second. So what are the countries then that are um, represented yeah, in the gallery? It's Indonesia. It's Malaysia, the Philippines, and because the uh, the people of that region uh, belong to a, a cultural and li linguistic group called Austronesians mm -hmm. um, that exp extends from Taiwan to all the way to Madagascar, okay. but has its focus in maritime Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. We also include some um, a small collection from the uh, Taiwanese uh, Aboriginal population. Okay. So, but the main focus is Indonesia, the Philippines. Okay. So, continue about um, the overview of the gallery. Yes. What kind so of pieces? We, we present um, the cultures of of the region, um, and that is uh, that is uh, a, a general introduction. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to introduce specific. Um, themes that are very relevant mm -hmm. to peoples from the area, uh, such as um, um, headhunting and warfare. Headhunting is something that seems very alien mm -hmm. to Westerners. And what is headhunting? It, 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 it was part of warfare um, formerly in, in the region, but it also had a very important ritual purpose. Mm -hmm. It was basically a growing of age uh, um, uh, occasion, mm -hmm. uh, young men had to go out and be, uh, you know, to prove themselves as young adults mm -hmm. to go out on headhunting raids. Um, also, heads were often uh, taken from, uh, from enemy groups to be part of building village temples or um, important ceremonial houses. Mm -hmm. That is the past. We're that's talking about the heads of people. That's right. Okay. So this is Thank obviously... Thank goodness it's in the past. <laughs> <laughs> I also introduced the, uh, the importance and the role of ancestors in uh, the spirit world. Mm -hmm. um, there is a small display on um, life cycle ceremonies. There's also um, a display that looks at the earliest um, uh, surviving forms of art, which are mostly metalwork from uh, going back uh, two or, uh, in some cases, 3,000 years. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, 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 these are objects that show patterns that are still relevant now. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to the gallery, you may look out for, for example, for a little um, uh, bronze um, uh, seated man who's playing a musical instrument. His back is very elaborately decorated with tattoos. Now this figure is from the uh, uh, from the very early 
uh, first century mm -hmm. BC. And right next to it, I display some um, uh, some um, stamps that were used uh, in Borneo to be uh, to be uh, covered with uh, with um, uh, black paint, mm -hmm. and then. Um, uh, um, then stamped onto the human body mm -hmm. as a guide for making tattoos. Ah, and they show virtually the same uh, intricate uh -huh, patterns. I think that is a very interesting yes, collection. Yes. Let's talk about your role as a curator. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what kinds of things do you do? Perhaps maybe give us a life in the day of Dr. Ruth Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I am um, first of all responsible for uh, making the, um, the collection accessible. Mm -hmm. So I am uh, um, I'm the person that uh, was responsible for designing and um, uh, choosing the objects and designing the overall display, mm -hmm. but I did that um, very much in collaboration with with our design team. I involved, of course, the conservators. Um, the our publication department uh, works closely with me when it comes to writing labels sure. and uh, interpreting the uh, the material, so that it, uh, we make sure that it is actually accessible. Okay. Um, specialists are often not the the, the best people for uh, for communicating um, right. what they know in great I know detail. What you mean. Um, so uh, the wonderful part of working in a museum for me uh, is always that it involves working with so many different people mm -hmm. who have vastly different talents. Right. Um, some of it very hands-on, some of it very much uh, uh, intellectual and academic planning and, mm -hmm. and research focused. And um, it really makes you feel quite humble about the different talents that we all bring to our sure. jobs to, yes. to work in the museum and bring it all together mm -hmm. into, uh, into something that becomes a creative um, and inspiring display. Right, right. So tell us, what was your goal, your ultimate goal in curating the, ex the installation? Uh, because this uh, material is probably quite uh, new to, to many of our visitors, I really wanted to, uh, to intro introduce this uh, collection or these collections in a way that uh, is accessible, mm -hmm. but also makes people marvel at the ingenuity and the creativity that uh, speaks through these objects. Mm -hmm. And what's what is the time span that the gallery um, shows mm -hmm. pieces from? Um, the earliest material that we display goes back to, uh, right to the prehistory of Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. are uh, metal uh, works, bronze um, uh, objects that go back to the, um, that have an age of about between three and 4,000 mm -hmm. years. But the, um, the main, um, the, 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 the chronology of, the, of most of our collection involves uh, the um, go, uh, goes from from the seventh eighth century A.D. Uh, right to the present, mm -hmm. to, that is to the to into the twentieth century, okay. and in some cases early twenty first century. Okay. Um, the there are three main parts to the collection. There is um, uh, the large group of, um, of uh, uh, three-dimensional objects, mostly wood sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, that is, in date, I would say most of that is 18th to early 20th century. Mm -hmm. Then there is a fabulous collection of textiles, mm -hmm. uh, which goes back uh, to an earlier period. Um, our earliest textiles have, um, I've actually been able to do some radiocarbon dating mm -hmm. on some of them. Our earliest textiles go back to the 15th, 16th century. Wow. And then we have a large uh, collection of about 500 gold objects from Central and East Java. Um, 
uh, that collection dates to the eighth, to the through to the thirteenth century. Okay. Um, so it has a large um, chronological mm -hmm. range, um, and I think it is important to have uh, to to make visitors aware of of that time depth. Sure. Um, so I'm very pleased that mm -hmm. we are able to do that yeah. with the gallery. So uh, let me ask you this. I is now the exhibit at the Yale Gallery the largest or one of the largest in this country? It certainly is, um, uh, and it also is of superb quality. Mm -hmm. I think it has uh, very few rivals, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it really is a probably the most outstanding collection okay. of its of its type. Wonderful. Um, there are important collections in uh, elsewhere in the country, mm -hmm. but uh, because this is a university museum, we also offer the opportunity of uh, involving students, involving the general public in um, in teaching um, sessions mm -hmm. in um, uh, and we really invite the the public to to make use of our collections mm -hmm. in a way that uh, uh, that enhance uh, advances learning and right, appreciation. Right. Okay, now moving forward, you have pieces that are in storage now that you will rotate out at some sure. point. Yes, that affects in particular the the textiles. Of course, mm -hmm. there's a constant uh, rotation uh, that will take place. Um, every uh, certainly every six months, we will have new uh, so uh, textiles. There's on a reason to go back sure. frequently. Very but good. also, eventually, I would like to have a part of the um, of the gallery dedicated um, to more focused, in-depth displays, um, either f for a particular uh, from a particular geographic mm -hmm. region um, or. Uh, covering a particular uh, uh, aspect of life that one f finds represented thru throughout the region. Mm -hmm. for one could, for example, look at um, at uh, the consumption of of uh, of uh, um, beetle, mm -hmm. which is uh, um, a, a mixture of uh, it's it's a, a palm nut, a rica nut. And uh, the fruit or leaf of the siri pepper, which is mixed with lime and is a mild um, um, a narcotic, um, oh. that is used throughout the region. It probably originated in Southeast Asia and spread to South Asia. It's very popular really? to have a true in in India as well. But it's it's very common in Southeast Asia, and because it is part of all social mm -hmm. um, exchange. Um, it, that is fascinating. Have, I had never heard yeah, of that. Yeah, we have so beautiful uh, paraphernalia that are connected with uh -huh. this. It's like um, having wine cups. Mm -hmm. uh, there are wonderful baskets that were made specifically to hold the different um, um, parts that go into making a beetle quid. Um, there are lime boxes, uh, lime as in chalk. Mm -hmm. uh, there are beetle nut cutters, uh, and we have uh, mm. wonderful um, examples for all of this, which we could have a small display that, sure. that it intru introduces that. That particular. sounds very interesting. We could also have, um, I would very much like, uh, we have a very strong collection from Borneo. Okay. And I think Borneo would appeal as, an, as, as a focused exhibition to the general public mm -hmm. because people are very aware of environmental issues mm -hmm. uh, from, that, uh, very, from that large island. Um, the, uh, the exploration of and, and uh, destruction of rainforests and um, uh, flora and fauna that that are, have been affected by that. Um, we could present wonderful works of art from the region, mm -hmm. but we could have, um, um, in collaboration with that, maybe have a, a conference or have uh, research projects that bring in Yale's uh, 
a school of forestry sure, yeah. or people who are scientists who work in environmental studies okay. in general. Let me ask you this. Of the collection there today, talk about um, a, a few of your favorite pieces and, and why they're your favorites. That's really a hard I bet one. it is, but you know, something that we can go and look for when we're yes, there. Sure, sure. Um, I would say um, among the uh, among the um, uh, sculptures, mm -hmm. I'm very fond in particular of one uh, ancestor head from the island of Leti. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it is, um, uh, um, it's, it, it, it's the head with the, uh, with the upper torso is shown and um, very beautifully, simply, uh, well, very, uh, very simply carved mm -hmm. um, um, uh, with very plain um, facial features, um, very refined. And then uh, it, the, the head has an elaborate headdress that really? is extremely ornate and beautifully carved earrings as mm -hmm. well with spiral patterns. Um, I think that's a very exquisite mm -hmm. uh, piece. In general, I think the Borneo um, wood carving is as good as, it, as carving can get. Okay. It's really extraordinary. Wonderful. Of course, I love the textiles. Yes. Uh, I love all of them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so th there will always be something new to look f right. for in that, uh, from that collection. Uh, among the gold pieces, I uh, I very much admire the uh, I the wonderfully worked um, exquisite ear ornaments. Mm -hmm. um, we have two kris that is a dagger, uh, Javan uh, as a type of Javanese dagger, mm -hmm. um, kris handles that are very very beautifully worked. But I think what is probably most touching mm -hmm. for me. Uh, in that particular collection are uh, small gold leaf um, uh, temple offerings. Mm -hmm. um, and they move me in particular because they um, represent the hopes and the prayers of people who lived more than a thousand years ago. Wow. And that I find uh, very uh, it just affects me. Yes. Well, this has been so much fun for me. I thank you for being here and sharing um, your work at the museum. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. For more information about Dr. Barnes and her work at the museum, please visit our website at yale.edu slash Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.